Hello, uh, good morning everybody. This is Girish Hende and today uh, we are going to discuss on Koshi which is very important for the courses of like BCom, BBA, MBA and uh, CA and CS also. So we have to understand very basically uh, the Koshi and I have given such kind of problem so that you will uh, you will have a good understanding to solve the problems. So here I have taken some points. Uh, the question uh, is uh, written on the board. Uh, that is from the following data relating to the manufacturing of standard product during the month of January 1999. Whatever the date is given, then prepare a statement showing cost and profit per unit. You have to calculate profit per unit also here. So there are some details. Uh, let's understand the details. What are the details given here? So what I wanted to tell you, we will understand this detail because we have to calculate the closing stock sometimes. Then we have to calculate per unit of production. We have to cal calculate much more things. That is uh, work on cost. Uh, one rupee of uh, office on cost is one of one rupee over work on cost. So how to write? this solution uh, we will see in the solution right so now raw material used is given here raw material used is also called raw material consumed so it is already given here raw material consumed so it is 40,000 rupees then direct labor charges is given the labor, are, labor charges are also given as we know that if we add labor or wages in raw material consumed we get prime cost so we will see in the uh, solution in our solution. Then we have machine hour work that is how many hours work it is 9500 hours it is given and the rate might also be given here see here machine hour rate is also given it is 4 rupees so you have to go through the given information you have to understand it uh, by which unit we have to multiply by what kind of uh, rupees actually so here machine hour work is given 9500 hours are given and the machine hour rate per hour is 4 rupees so we have to multiply 9500 by 4 rupees then we will get the uh, machine hour whatever it is then we have selling overheads selling overheads per unit is 1 rupee whenever we are going to write the selling overheads we will uh, calculate selling overheads on the unit sold here so we have to understand very clearly that when the unit sold is given then we have to multiply it by 1. So selling overheads can be calculated like this. Then we have units produced. Here units produced is 20,000 units and units sold is 18,000. Whatever the difference is between produced is 20,000 and sold is 18,000 units. So the difference becomes 2,000 units. What is that 2000 unit? 2000 unit is our closing stock because uh, out of 20,000 units produced, we have sold 18,000 units. So the closing stock becomes 2000 units. How to calculate per unit uh, price of that closing stock? We'll see in the problem. Okay. Now uh, unit sold is also given 18,000. Then we have units at the rate of 10 rupees per unit. Whatever the units were sold by the company it is 10 rupees per unit so 10 into 1 18,000 it becomes 1 lakh 80,000 we have to remember the this is the sale actually we are having so you have to when the information is given about the units sold and the rate per unit so you have to multiply 18,000 multiply by 10 this is the problem given uh, in the cost sheet and office overheads is also given Office overheads it is given in percentage. So percentage on what? So percentage 20% of work cost. When we calculate uh, work cost after adding uh, factory overheads in prime cost, we get work cost. And on that amount work cost amount, we don't have in our problem the amount of work cost. We have to calculate the work cost first. Then only we will be able to find out the 20% on work cost. So we have to understand all this given information first and we have to see that uh, the relation between this information how to calculate then only we will solve the problems 
so we shall now discuss over the solution what is given here cost account i have written then i have drawn a table in the table particulars units sold cost rupees then total cost rupees here and per unit cost is also given so uh, you have to sketch the table like this so that it if we include particulars units uh, total cost rupees per unit cost it also will be written so how to write the solution first we will uh, understand we have understood the question the problem which is given on the board so here first i have given the raw material used what raw material used means raw material consumed so we have to take raw material consumed 4000 units and whatever the units we have produced during the uh, that period it is 20000 units so you have to multi divide uh, 40000 by 20000 then you will get the per unit produced so the raw material consumed per unit so like this you will calculate the raw material use uh, consumed per unit you have to divide 40000 by 20000 because 20000 units are produced in each uh, in each per unit cost in each table we will divide uh, 20000 uh, these rupees by 20000 always so we will get the cost per unit here then we, we are given wages also wages direct labor is given 24000 so 24000 will be divided by 20,000 then we get if we divide 24,000 by 20,000 we get 1 rupee 20 pesa then adding both of them material consumed and wages when we add wages in material consumed we get prime cost I have told you this is a very important factor we have got now prime cost we can calculate other analysis also on this prime cost so we have got 64,000 prime cost and per unit adding both the uh, material consumed and uh, wages we we get three rupees twenty pesa. Then we have to add work overheads. Work overheads means factory overheads. So factory overheads is given already here. So factory overhead is what? Factory overheads means nine thousand five hundred units uh, work working hours are is given already. And uh, per our rate is four rupees. So we have to multiply nine thousand five hundred by four rupees. Then we will get uh, the Factory office, uh, sorry, factory overheads. So multiplying four rupees by nine thousand five hundred hours work, so we get thirty-eight thousand. That is thirty-eight thousand is again divided by twenty thousand. We get one rupee ninety pesa. Similarly, then adding this uh, work overheads in prime cost. When we add work overheads in prime cost, we get work cost. So work cost, or or we can say factory cost also. Then we have the total after adding this uh, prime cost uh, in work cost, we get 1 lakh 2000 rupees as a work cost. It is also added, the units are also added. If we divide 38,000 divided by 20,000, we get 190, 1 rupee 90 pesa. Then adding this column, we get 5 rupees 10 pesa. After that, we have to add office on cost or uh, we can say office and administration on cost. So office and administration cost is added. Then it is 20 percent. It is the amount is not given. The amount of office on cost is not given. Only the 20 percent of work cost. The information is given. 20 percent of first work cost. You have to calculate office on cost. So office on cost will be 20 percent of work cost. So work cost is one lakh two thousand here. So on one lakh two thousand, we have to calculate 20 percent. So 20% of 120,000 becomes 20,400. Then we have we have to add the office on cost in work cost. We get cost of production. Adding these two unit uh, two terms, we get 122,400. And similarly, we have to divide this 122,000 by 20,000 units. So we get per unit rate of uh, here cost of production. So the in the information in the problem it is already given 20,000 units are produced so cost of production will be matched with the 20,000 units produced whatever the units were produced during that period so dividing this 122,400 by 20,000 20,000 units are produced you divide it by 20,000 this amount so you get 
per unit produced rate rate of per unit produced and from this table also you can tell you can add 5 rupees 10 paisa and 1 rupees 2 paisa whatever the office cost was so adding the last column you get 6 rupees 12 paisa as a cost of production of each unit so you have got here the cost of production of each unit or each item then uh, you have to deduct the closing stock after adding office on cost in work cost you get cost of production cost of production is very important to know the uh, cost of each item then you have to deduct the closing stock because uh, closing stock will remain with the company it is not so so we have to calculate the profit on sales so we will not add this closing stock we'll, we have to deduct the closing stock because the units produced was given then unit sold is given units produced was, was 20,000 and units sold was 18,000 so difference of units produced and units sold it is 2,000 rupees 20,000 minus 18,000 uh, it uh, comes to 2,000 so this is the closing stock which is not sold by the company so closing stock uh, is 2,000 uh, 2, rupees whatever the units produced cost is 6 rupees 12 pesa the same rate will apply on the closing stock also so closing stock will carry the same rate like uh, it is 6 rupees 12 pesa if you do, if, if you have to multiply 2000 by 6 rupees 12 pesa here you have to stay uh, uh, you have to keep attention here then only you will understand so the closing stock unit was 20000 uh, 2000 sorry 2000 and you have to multiply 6 rupees 12 pesa whatever the article it has produced per unit you have to multiply it by closing stock so closing stock will have a same uh, arti uh, rate of article each article so 6 rupees 12, per, 12 pesa will be multiplied by 2000 you get 12,240 then so you have to add you have to deduct it from 1,22,400 12,240 will be deducted because it is a closing stock it, it remains with the company and whenever we are finding the profit we will not and we will deduct the closing stock here after deducting the closing stock in unit and in rupees also we get 1,10,160 here so we get after deducting closing stock from the cost of production we get the cost of goods sold cost of goods sold here it is very important to calculate the other analysis also cost of goods sold becomes 18,000 whatever the uh, units we have sold it is 18,000 then it will have uh, 1 lakh 10,000 160 uh, rupees the same actually what we are selling we are selling at uh, means cost of goods sold is the same what we have in the cost of production uh, closing stock rate and the uh, cost of goods sold also will have the same rate 6 rupees 12 pesa you have to remember here then the, it will have a same, same rate because we have produced each article at 6 rupees 12 pesa so uh, on 18,000 if we multiply by this so we get the amount 1 lakh 10,160 as a cost of goods sold after cost of goods sold we have selling overheads so selling overheads is given already it is 1 rupee per unit sold so how much units we have sold we have sold 18,000 units so multiplying 18,000 with 1 rupee you get 18,000 rupees so 1, in, 1 rupee into 18,000 we get uh, 18,000 and here I have written per unit it is 1 rupee it is already given so you have to state in this line uh, selling overheads at the rate of rupees per unit it is 1 rupee and multiplying it by 18,000 because 18,000 units we are selling whatever then we have to add the selling overheads also because it is expenses so expenses are we are all uh, calculating these expenses only so we have to add one by one only closing stock is deducted now here selling overheads is added then selling overheads is added we, we get 1,28,160 as a total cost of goods sold after cost of goods sold we get after adding in cost of goods sold, uh, closing stock, uh, sorry, uh, this selling overheads, if we add selling overheads in cost of goods sold, we get total cost of goods sold. 
So total cost of goods sold here is eighteen thousand unit only because we are selling eighteen thousand unit. So in this column we don't have to add only we have to indicate here eighteen thousand unit eighteen thousand units we have produced and we are sold selling eighteen thousand only. So so on this eighteen thousand we have got total cost of goods sold on this eighteen thousand unit we have we got this amount. Then dividing this amount. By eighteen thousand unit, in the same line we get seven rupees twelve paisa. So we have cal we have calculated at the same time the units of total cost of goods sold also. So what we have seven rupees twelve paisa per paisa. It is a total cost of goods sold after selling eighteen thousand rupees at one lakh twenty eight thousand one sixty. We have to divide this amount by units. Then we get per unit. Cost here seven rupees twelve paisa. Then after the sales is already given. If we deduct cost total cost of goods sold, you have to concentrate here. From sales, you have to deduct total cost of goods sold. You get profit. That is the difference between the sales and the total cost of goods sold will give you the net profit here because we have already added selling and distribution expenses. So. Adding all the cost, we have sales also. So sale is, sales is greater than the total cost of goods sold. When sale is greater than the total cost of goods sold, we get net profit. So we have got fifty one thousand eight forty as a net profit, and this is on eighteen thousand units sold. So you may write here eighteen thousand units sold. On eighteen thousand, we have got fifty one thousand eight forty as a net profit, and dividing this. Fifty-one thousand eight forty by eighteen thousand unit. What we have sold, so fifty-one thousand eight forty will be divided by eighteen thousand. We get two rupees eighty-eight paisa as a per unit profit. So we also got the per unit profit here. So how to calculate the profit in in such kind of problem? We have seen here. So sales is sales was also given here, and when we add the uh, total cost of goods sold. And profit uh, in units. So ten rupees is already given in sales. So sales was ten rupees on eighteen thousand units sold. So each unit sold at ten rupees, and the units were eighteen thousand. So we have got the sale already. So we when we have got the sale, we have total cost of goods sold also. The difference will become the profit. So profit in rupees also we have calculated. Profit in terms of unit also we have calculated in rupees as well as in unit. So this will disclose all the fact about the companies, whatever the decisions which are based on the production activities, the manager or the uh, entrepreneur, uh, they, they can take the decision uh, in this uh, regard and they can uh, easily control the cost what they have to control. So this is I have already told you. About uh, this problem, it is very important from the point of view of MBA aspirants, then uh, uh, then CA who are giving the exam for CA, CS. This is a very basic problem, and this kind of problem you will see in the examinations, BCom also or uh, BBA also, BCC also. They are having such type of cost account. It is very important. So thank you for listening my video. And uh, you may subscribe it. Uh, uh, I'll let you know uh, further more videos regarding the question as well as uh, the tender, how the tenders and quotations are prepared. Thank you very much for listening me.